in the Felicia's minds. In 1985, I sang for the first time in Mystic the, the song I wrote about the two Norwegians who rode across the Atlantic. Right? They were here. And they had a tape recorder or something. And they said, oh, that's a song worth learning. They took it back and immediately changed it dramatically. So there's now the West Coast Pinton Dale version and then the East Coast Bryant version. So you're going to hear the Bryant version with them singing along, which they, I don't think they've ever done since 1985. So we'll see how it goes. And you all join in too. In Brooklyn, New York, at the turn of the century lived two young Norwegians so brave and so bold. Frank Samuelson only halfway through his twenties, George Hargo had just become thirty years old. The Hargo had spent all his life on the water, each shipped in square riggers while barely a lad. His partner likewise was no stranger to work, and no matter the task, he gave all that he had. We'll see you in France, or we'll see you in heaven, cried Hargo and Samuelson out on the bay. Two hardy young oystermen after adventure, and no one believed they could roll. Holding up pretty well. <laughs> Many men had attempted to cross the Atlantic in small wooden boats that were driven by sail. Those that succeeded were welcomed as heroes, but many there were who did nothing but fail. Then a rich publisher offered a challenge that men in a vessel, no matter the size, Without steam or canvas, could not make the crossing, and ten thousand dollars he named as the prize. We'll see you in France, or we'll see you in heaven. Cried our boy Samuelson out on the bay to hardy young oystermen after adventure, and no one believed they could row all the way. Now dredging of oysters by hand is no picnic, and these two young fellas were tough as a whip. Said Frank, if we row only four miles an hour for fifty-four days, we could finish the trip. Obtaining a sponsor, they started their training. They ordered a dory made of cedar and oak, just eighteen feet long with a draft of eight inches, and Fox was the name of their cockle shell boat. We'll see you in France, or we'll see you in heaven, cried Harbour and Samuelson out on the bay, to hardy young oystermen after adventure, and no one believed they could row all the way. On the sixth day of June, eight and six misters Harbo and Samuelson started to roll. It took food and water to last until August, and the newspaper said they were foolish to go. From the slip in Manhattan, they rode through the narrows, then out for the Gulf Stream and on to the deep. Each day they would row. 18 hours together, each night they took turns getting three hours sleep. We'll see you in France, or we'll see you in heaven, cried Harbour and Samuelson out on the bay. Two hardy young oystermen after their adventure, and no one believed they could row all the way. Now their stove wouldn't light. So they ate cold provisions, their arms and their hands became swollen and cramped. The odd passing vessel that took them on board was their only relief from the toil and the damp. And out on the Grand Banks the weather attacked them, the wind humped the water in the mountainous ways. They lashed down their oars and they tied on their lifelines and prayed they were not going straight to their graves. We'll see you in France, so we'll see you in heaven. Cry Harbour and Samuelson out on the bay. To hardy young moisturant after adventure. And no one believed they could grow all the way. A monstrous wave hurtled out of the darkness 
rolling over the fox and her terrified crew. The night lines held fast, but they lost half their water and most of the food it was swept away too. They carefully rationed the little remaining, praying for help as they rode o'er the brine. Last a tall ship appeared on the horizon with the colors of Norway uprodden behind. Oh, we'll sail in France, or oh, we'll sail in heaven. Bright harbor in San Wilson, out on the bay, to hardy young oystermen after an adventure. No one believed they could row all the way. Now that captain could not. He convinced they weren't crazy, but he gave them supplies. And they went on their way by the lines on the charts. They were halfway to Europe. Now they must row 60 miles every day. Weather held fair. Two men kept pulling all during the days and far into each night. To early one morning, before the sun rose, Far on the horizon they spotted a light. We'll see you in France, or we'll see you in heaven. Right our boy Samuelson now is on the bay. To hardy young western and after adventure. And no one believed they could row all the way. On August the 1st they made land. St. Mary's off the south coast of England, close by the ship's rock. In amazement, the townsfolk gathered down by the water, where Harbo and Samuelson barely could walk. Most men would have stopped then to bask in the glory, after having been sunbeaten, capsized, and starved. But they were both back in their boat the next morning, and in less than a week they arrived in Lahore. We'll see you in France, or we'll see you in heaven. Cried Harbour and Samuelson out on the bay, to hardy young oyster and after adventure. Those of you listen, who yearn for adventure like Harbo and Samuelson so long ago. Why then be prepared for the task you'll be facing? They were not only brave, but by God they could row. We'll see you in France or we'll see you in heaven. Yeah.